Patricia, that's a pencil sharpener, not a pencil shortener. Sorry, I get carried away. Mm. So, you all ready for the big elections? Yeah. I guess Devon will be an okay president. So you think Devon's gonna beat Lisa? Of course. The boys always vote for the boys, and the girls always vote for the girls. Fifteen boys, thirteen girls, Devon wins. Well, you could be wrong, you know. <laughs> okay, everyone, take your seats. Welcome to Election Central. We are about to conduct our first presidential poll. Now, who can tell me what a poll is? Donald. A poll is when the TV tells you who's gonna win, so you don't have to vote. <laughs> Not exactly. A poll is an unofficial vote that shows how the candidates are doing. Now, I want everyone to cover their eyes. <laughs> Now, if the elections were held today, how many people would vote for Devon? Okay. And how many people would vote for Lisa? Okay, hands down. Aren't we voting for real today? No, the Board of Elections, that's me, has decided to postpone the vote until Friday. I think we should try a real election for a change. What do you mean? Well, instead of the boys voting for the boys and the girls voting for the girls, I think we should listen to what each candidate has to say and then vote for the one you think is best. Man, this is gonna be easier than I thought. Save it for the campaign, Devon. Okay, let's give the candidates a few minutes to prepare the opening speeches, and in the meantime... Lisa? I'm ready now. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> For my opening speech, I would like to read a poem I wrote about my feelings for mankind. If the title's more than two words, we're in trouble. <laughs> I call this hopes and dreams and sorrow and sadness and horrible things that happen to really good people. Get comfortable. <laughs> water and we can't breathe the air and we can't eat the apples and we can't eat the grapes and we can't help the homeless and we can't feed the poor and I just don't know what to do anymore thank you Lisa that was but I've got my brothers and I've got my sisters and as long as I'm talking walking and praying I will always help others thank you Are you finished? Mm-hmm. You sure? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Lisa. Uh, uh, Devon, would you, you like to say something to the class? Sure. Welcome our candidate from the fifth row, gateway to the sixth row, Devon Robinson. <laughs> Yo, y'all know me, I'm Devon Robinson. For president, we need a guy who's smart, a guy who's strong, a guy who's not Lisa. <laughs> What's wrong with Lisa? Well, for one thing, no one's gonna pay any attention to her. That's not so, Devon. Excuse me, you say something? <laughs> I'm not gonna play your game. We have different styles. Right. 
I have style and you're different. <laughs> okay, everybody follow Mrs. Saltine's class in the lunchroom and remember, no more conga lines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. I got it, I got it. Pardon me. Well, that's the last of them. I hate it when they bunch up like that. I thought you handled it well. Thank you. I hate to bring up the P word. Problem? Your attitude, ability, and attendance survey is due. Today? Worse. Yesterday. Worse than that. Come on, I can take it. Give it to me straight. You're a full week overdue. Ouch. <laughs> Mr. Harper, I like you. And I like you, too. I know you do. <laughs> and that's why, as a friend, I have come here today to administer a little slap on the wrist. Allow me. <laughs> I needed that. And to tell you that if you don't have the survey on my desk at 3 o'clock today, that will just mean more work for me, and you don't want that. <laughs> bon appétit. <laughs> It's Billy D. Williams. <laughs> oh, hi, Daryl. Cute. What are you doing here? It's in the middle of the day. Miss Wagner sent me home. Oh, well, you're a bad boy. Not since last night. <laughs> what are you looking for? Looking for my survey sheets. What are you looking for? My neurology textbook. Well, I'll keep an eye out for it. Now, where would I hide if I were a survey sheet? Oh, under a pillow. No, that's where I'd hide if I were a spatula. Uh, did you check the bedroom? Good idea. Oh, honey, brace Oh, up. my God! What is all that stuff, anyway? The pile on the right needs to be ironed. The pile on the left needs to be washed. And what about the pile in the middle? It needs to be burned. Whatever you say. You gotta burn that book. I have two big exams this week. I know what you mean. I, besides having a month of lesson plans and essays, I got these survey sheets to fill out, and I can't even find them. Oh, there's one more thing. I invited Dad to dinner tonight. I hope that's not a problem. Not with me. Oh, good. Here it is. My survey sheets? Sorry. Oh, baby, I'd love to stay and help, but... Don't worry about it. It's just a piece of paper. All right. I know you're in here somewhere. Now, we can do this the easy way. Or we can do it the hard way. <laughs> okay. There's lots we could do. The Surgeon General says we need more fiber in our diets. And if I'm president, we could start right here in our own lunchroom. Why don't we eat one of Donald's shirts? There should be enough fiber to last a lifetime. <laughs> How much fiber in a knuckle sandwich? Why do we have to eat fibers? It can help prevent terrible diseases. What kind of diseases? Heart attacks. Oh, no. <laughs> and Celeste, you can be my Secretary of Defense. Well, I'm voting for Lisa. She's my friend. You wouldn't be saying that if you heard what she said about you. What did she say? She said you're always tagging along and getting in the way, and you're too funny. She said that. That's what I heard. Instead of throwing out our old paper, we should recycle it. Remember, trees are the lungs of the earth. You know, Lisa, I've heard your poems. You are the lungs of the earth. <laughs> are you going to take that? Devon can say what he wants. I'm doing fine running my kind of campaign. Lisa, how do I chew? I don't know how you two. You don't know, huh? Well, I think you two like a cow. <laughs> What's wrong with her? Don't look at me. <laughs> the race is entering the final and critical stages. You can just feel the electricity in the air. <laughs> Trisha? <laughs> okay. It's time for the candidates to present their platforms. Who can tell me what a platform is? Sam. 
Is it one of those things that the candidates stand on when they speak? No, no, in a way, Sam's right. It's a candidate's foundation of principles and beliefs. Now, let's welcome our first candidate, a man who wants to make it from the schoolhouse to the White House. Usually incredible, always unforgettable, Devon Robinson. Here's my platform. One, I will try to get us longer weekends. Thank you. <laughs> Spoken like a true politician, Devon. Okay, let's welcome our second candidate. The fourth grade's answer to Tracy Chapman. The one, the only, Lisa Forrest. Thank you for nominating me. I have a dream. <laughs> we all know that there's an awful lot of terrible things going on in this world. The phone police are here. Come on, Devon. My dream is that by making this a better class to learn in, we are taking the first step on the path toward world peace, feeding the hungry and housing the homeless. Thank you. Donald? Yeah, I wanted to ask Devon, would a weekend be like a whole day longer? Uh, 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 Lisa, are you finished yet? No, I decided to write a little poem. Anyone got a pillow? <laughs> I call it Acid Rainbows. No, anyone got a muzzle? <laughs> I want to look up and see the sky and see the moon and stars. I want to look down and see the sea, not cans and candy bars. But the sky is hidden by the air and pollution fills the sea. Why can't I stand in the snow and rain without acid falling on me? Are we in junior high yet? <laughs> well, Devon, could you show a little courtesy? That's all right, Mr. Harper. Devon has the right to say what he wants. Thank you. Stupid as it may be. Lisa, class, class, class. Lisa, I'm surprised at you. We're trying to run a clean, honest campaign here. No name calling, you got it? Don't look at me. Talk to Mr. Pinhead. Who are you calling Pinhead? Oh, excuse me. I meant Biscuit Head. <laughs> you better watch out. That's it. That's enough. Mr. Hopper? Oh, hi, Lisa. You wanted to see me? Yeah, I uh, just had a caucus with candidate Devon, and I was telling him how disappointed I was in how this election was going. I know, Mr. Harper. I don't know why I said those terrible things to him. He just worked my last nerve. I understand, but you know that's no excuse. I'm sorry. Well, part of this is my fault. I wanted a real political campaign, and it looks like that's what I got. What should I do, Mr. Harper? I want to win. I know. I should win. I understand. I deserve to win. You're not going to sing, are you? I talked about my hopes and dreams. Devon tells jokes, makes fun of me. And he's going to win. And it's not fair. So what are you going to do? What should I do? You have to decide what's best for you running the kind of race you can be proud of and maybe losing, or winning the race no matter what it takes. You see what I mean? I understand. Good. Thanks, Mr. Harper. Come in, doors open. Why did I even bother to install a brand new $85 dead boat if you're just gonna leave the door open? Because danger is my middle name. Well, it obviously isn't dignity. I'm looking for some important papers I misplaced. How could you misplace anything in here? It's so neat and clean. I know the place is a mess, Phil, but this week's been a killer with Jenny's exams and my schoolwork and running the class elections. So, you're teaching the kids about the democratic process. I hope you're telling them the truth. Which is? Taxpayer elects the politician, the politician makes the law. 
Law rips off the taxpayer and the world goes round. Phil, but it doesn't have to be that way. Just today, I was teaching my candidates the importance of a clean and honest campaign. You live in your own little dream world, don't you, son? Oh, hi, Daddy. Hi, honey. Mm, I'm gonna go wash up. Will dinner be ready soon? Well, that depends on how long it takes you to make dinner. Oh, no, baby. Uh-uh. No, you, I thought you were gonna cook dinner. No, I, di I didn't say that. There's no dinner? Yes, remember? We talked about it this afternoon. Right, and you said everything would be okay. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. I thought that's what you said. No dinner at all? Oh, oh, I suppose the laundry hasn't been done either. Very good, you get a gold star. And there isn't going to be any dinner? Daryl, you said you were going to do the laundry today. Now, did I say that before or after I said I would make dinner, which I didn't say? I Ooh, look at the time. I hate to not eat and run, but mostly I hate to not eat. <laughs> Daryl, I do not have time to do all this. Well, what makes you think I have time? Because you get off work at 3. Well, you don't work. You go to school. Uh oh, that's what you think? Fine. 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 <laughs> Fine. To our little talk. You said I had to make a choice. That's right. I decided that I wanted to win. Fair enough. Okay, I think we've done enough mudslinging for today. So let's get the election back on track. Okay, it's time for the great debate. Devon, I want you to sit here. Lisa, I want you to sit here. And the moderator is gonna be me. Okay, you've all prepared your questions, so let's hear them. What would you do if someone in our class was accused of stealing, but they really didn't do it? Good question, Vanessa. Candidates? Well, if my man didn't steal anything, then I'd just punch it in the one in the nose who thought he did. <laughs> oh, brilliant. You got a better answer? Does your head come to a point? Yes. <laughs> Candidates, please. Miss Forrest. First, I'll talk to the person who is accused of stealing. Probably Devon. <laughs> and if he really didn't do it, which I doubt, then You I... better watch it. Oh, I'm scared. Candidates, chill out. You got a problem with something said to my face. Who wants to look at your face? I said chill out. Sam? Mr. Harper. Do I have to vote? Why wouldn't you want to vote? Because I don't like either candidate anymore. I see what you mean. Okay, candidates, we're going to change the rules just a little bit. The moderator is going to ask the last question. Devon, Lisa, I want each of you to tell me ten good things about your opponent. About him? Yep. Well, I would say one good thing about Devon is that he doesn't live anywhere near me. <laughs> okay, that's a start. Devon. Good things about her? Mm-hmm. Her poems are good, if you have a hard time getting to sleep. Ooh, we are cooking now. Lisa. He has a lot of friends. I don't really know why, but he does. Okay, Devon. She always wins those stupid spelling bees. Mm, he's not a terrible dresser. She's pretty friendly for a girl. He always brings the best lunches. She always has the best science projects. He has nice teeth. She has nice hair. He doesn't sweat much. She's always on time. He goes to the right movies because I see him there. Thank you, candidates. You've both shown that you have a lot of things going for you. And I know it's easy to fall into a trap of attacking others. Politicians do it all the time. But you don't have to do that. 
You can rely on your own strength to show who you really are. Mr. Harper, can I change my mind? I want to vote now. Devon, I would just like to say that no matter who wins, no heart feelings. Yeah. The debate was fun. Yeah. Well, good luck. Right, good luck. You really like my hair. <laughs> you really see me at the movies? Mm-hmm. Maybe I see you there sometime. The girl's a fool. You talk to him? Him? He's a doofus. Homeroom will continue in a moment. my toolbox here. Okay, how long you two gonna keep this up? All right, listen. I am speaking to you as your father, as your father-in-law, and as your landlord. And the three of us would like the two of you to sit on the couch. <laughs> now! <laughs> Fine. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. Before I became a supervisor, I drove a bus through New York traffic at all hours of the day and night. I'd come home from work exhausted, and there was your mother, smiling, playing with our beautiful baby. And I said, boy, she has the life. Well, one weekend, your mother had to visit her sister Eve in Jersey, and she leaves me in charge of our sweet baby girl. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that after just one hour of chasing that two-year-old, I was ready to get back on that bus and sit in traffic for a month. <laughs> and that's when I started fixing hot chocolate for your mother before she went to bed. She loved that. Now, don't forget to lock the door behind you. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. So how'd your exams go? Well, if my patient lives till Monday, I passed. How did the election turn out? Boys voted for the boys, girls voted for the girls, Devon by two. That'll change. You know, it's amazing. What? That's the fifth time he's used that hot chocolate story on us, and it works every time. <laughs> Stay tuned for The Color of Money, the ABC Sunday Night Movie, starring Tom Cruise and Paul Newman, next. Hehehehe. <laughs> 